We are Maria and Nicole. We're two secular homeschooling moms that have been been there, done done that. that. Welcome to episode 17. Today we're going to be talking about how to prepare a middle schooler for high school. What does your middle schooler need to know? How do you deal with sibling growing pains? And how do you motivate your middle schooler? And as usual, we want to stress that our podcast is an inclusive space for your everyday parents that are looking for education options. We are not here to convince you to homeschool. Uh, We want to stress that you need to do what works for your child and for your family. Every family is different. Absolutely. And you know your children best. So uh, feel free to take what advice or information you get from here that works for you and chuck the rest. Good morning, Nicole. How was your hike this morning? Ooh, it was very chilly. Yeah, 32 degrees out. Pulled into the parking lot at the preserve and there were four cars. (laughs) Well, I heard it's going to snow tomorrow. That's what they say. I don't know if I believe it. I think it's supposed to happen in like the wee hours tonight, too. Right. Well, I did Camp Gladiator this morning. It was 30 degrees on the concrete. Were you the only one there? Eight people there. Oh, my gosh. Well, you know how Arbor Hills is. It's always busy. So when I pulled in there with four cars, I was like, what's the matter? Is it closed? (laughs) What's going on? But um, I guess that's just the line for Texans. 30 and up. (laughs) Only like the hardcore people are out. Right. (laughs) So what have you been up to? Oh my gosh, I've been so busy. Oh, I know. We worked really hard to put this episode together for everyone. And uh, as we were doing so, we realized there is way too much to cover when you're preparing your middle schooler for high school. Right, exactly. Well, I felt like it was really important to help guide everyone through those middle school years. I know there are a lot of homeschoolers that are feeling overwhelmed when their child's starting to get a little bit older. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it starts to feel a little overwhelming. And to help them, I've been spending all of my free time creating a middle school guide for you guys. It's going to prepare your middle schooler for high school. And it's going to be so much more than what we can cover in one podcast episode. It's going to completely walk you through everything. So everything. I'm, yeah, we're going to have secular curriculum and book list suggestions. We're going to have core subjects and mastery skills addressed. And we're going to have math, science, language arts, and social studies. It's also going to include logic and critical thinking, technology skills, and we're going to have a foreign language guide in there. And it's going to have specific supplemental resources and electives that are secular for you going to be walking you through the PSAT and that might seem kind of scary but you can get through this I promise it's typically taken in 8th 9th or 10th grade and we're also going to be touching on the TSI which is the Texas Success Initiative exam and it's a test which is designed to determine if your student is ready for college level coursework there are a lot of homeschoolers that begin taking dual credit classes at their local community college or even online during the high school years many of them as young as ninth grade so it may be something you may want to think about while still in middle school This is really going to be an incredible resource. I can't wait. I know. Me too. So (laughs) I've been working on it. So I'm spending all my free time working on this. So you guys are going to love it. I swear. I love it. And we'd really like to thank one of our listeners for inspiring that and this entire episode. We're always asking for listeners to send in questions or topic ideas. And Melissa from Minnesota submitted a couple questions for uh, actually for our Q&A episode. But we thought they were so great. We're like, let's do an entire episode on this. So Right. And then after we we designed we design the entire episode we realized oh my gosh there's hey, even more to cover let's so. do even more so thank you melissa and uh hey everybody write us in some questions you never know you might get an entire episode not just a q a out of it exactly So we talk a lot about high school since we both have high schoolers and because we're putting together also this awesome high school series that we've been working on. Be sure to check it out if you haven't already. Right. Um, And we talk a lot about homeschooling early elementary kids or getting started. But what about the middle schoolers? They kind of get forgotten. Middle school is a time when kids are figuring out who they are, what they want to do, you know, with the rest of their lives. And it's important to give them the opportunity to explore different interests and try new things. But it's also so crucial to make sure they're staying on track academically. There's a lot to do and think about before they hit that high school time. So that's why it's so important to prepare middle schoolers for high school. They need to know what's expected of them and have a plan in place so they don't fall far behind. 
This means focusing on the academic, the social, and emotional aspects of transitioning into this next phase. Yeah, and there's several ways that high school differs from middle school, like increased responsibilities, mm -hmm. uh, more course options, and extracurricular activities. And the workload and expectations are going to be higher. The content is going to be a little bit more difficult. So let's explore some ways to prepare your middle schoolers for what's to come. So what does your middle schooler need to know? Well, the landscape of education is constantly evolving, and especially since COVID, there are more and more offerings for classes online. In fact, chances are good that your child will take a variety of online or even hybrid courses during the high school years. Online learning differs from traditional education methods, so there are benefits to exposing your teen to this type of learning while the stakes are much lower. Yeah, and my high school kids took a variety of classes on different platforms and I actually think it better prepared them for college for too. sure mine too yeah mm -hmm. most of uh, their peers had really only done online coursework when COVID hit so it was really handy that they had had a lot of different things I think it's especially important for homeschoolers to take at least one virtual class while they're in middle school to get right. ready for those high school and I think it's courses. really awesome because sometimes if it's especially their very first class online we're right there so we can kind yeah. of help them navigate and communicate with the teacher absolutely and, yeah so regardless of their strengths I would encourage your students to develop technological and writing skills this is going to help them be better prepared for high school and beyond or even in the competitive job market make sure they know how to type I use this fantastic game-like typing program called Typing Instructor. I'll reference that in the show notes if you want to check that out because it really helped them to learn. And I also had the skin. It was this orange skin. It went right on top of the keyboard so they couldn't peek at the letters. Oh, funny. I need that, so, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have them learn Google Slides or PowerPoint. My kids actually make their Christmas lists on Google Slides. Oh, that's They smart. make these PowerPoint. Oh, yeah. They make these <laughs> elaborate PowerPoint. They've got music set to them, like different slides with their something to wear, something to Being read. Being creative. Like, I like that. <laughs> lists. It's funny. Yeah. They can even present some of their lessons to you or to a class in that medium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are several online tutorials for Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and various versions of these computer skills. You can also find free courses through most library systems. We did one for Excel. So that really set up my child for college, actually, because I need to do that. Yeah. I love that. Instead of just asking you to help me. <laughs> <laughs> They're free. Uh, why, why not? And there are a lot of basic step-by-step -step guides even on YouTube. I'm a huge fan of teaching basic programming. We love learning Scratch. And that's a free software that teaches basic programming created by MIT. Another thing that we used was Lego We Do, and that was super fun when they were younger, like right in the early middle school years, and it teaches basic programming. The cool thing about Lego We Do is that you build your Lego, and then you can program it to do certain things on a basic level. Oh, neat. It has a smart hub with motors and sensors, and then you can program it in the software that they provide. It's super cool, and then watch your Lego do certain things. Neat. Yeah, and that was one of the first things that got both of my kids really interested in computer programming. Oh, I love that. Yeah. My kids also had a variety of classes and group projects that used Google Classroom and different shared Google documents. So learning how to navigate these platforms and also teaching a little bit of online etiquette to go with that is handy. Right. You never want to be the person that accidentally deleted the entire group <laughs> project on Google Docs. So I think it was Riley's second <laughs> course in dual credit and one of the kids actually got kicked out of the class oh, because oh no. the professor is really specific okay in the subject line and email I need anytime you communicate with me you have to have this you have to have that and that child kept breaking the rules oh no and the professor literally kicked them out of the class yeah oh my goodness another thing you really want to think about is to improve their writing skills uh, to help them gradually throughout middle school assign more writing assignments or different styles and links things like product reviews are a great way to make writing fun for kids love those amazon reviews yeah make them do it <laughs> make them funny <laughs> those are my favorites yeah <laughs> maybe you could even start a blog or a newsletter yeah one of our curriculum assignments was making advertisements and my kids really enjoyed those and got some art time in on top of uh, some writing skills I like that. 
that. Yeah, they could also have a Goodreads account and do book reviews. Uh, Yeah, Jane loves to write book reviews. Also, writing prompt books. Like, I've picked up a couple from just, like, five below that have different writing prompts on a given day. And then you can write, like, a story or more to go with it. Journaling, those are great ways to get Mm -hmm. more writing in. And um, uh, story starters that I think I mentioned in another episode is something where it gives you, like, the beginning of a story and then you finish it. My kids liked to make them, like, as bizarre as they could right and so I was like hey go ahead might not fly in a classroom but it will totally fly in my classroom yeah. for journaling we did that religiously every single day before school everybody went to their own corners and just journaled from the day before that, yeah. was, that was a really nice way to start the school day I love that now that we are in Black History Month and MLK Day was two weeks ago, it reminds me of one of the writing assignments that was super memorable for all of us here in our homeschool. I had my middle schooler at the time create a newspaper and they wrote articles on Dr. King, downloaded pictures and printed them and pasted them in there. And the March on Washington as if they were actually there. Aww. Yeah, they even wrote Dr. King's eulogy, which was powerful and it was super awesome. And I have that today in oh. my little documents I keep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a fantastic uh, resource and idea for project. I love that. Right. <laughs> Something very basic, too, as we're teaching those writing skills is uh, to teach our homeschoolers to write their names at the top of the paper. Like, it seems silly when there oh are gosh. one student, but um, <laughs> remember Dr. Reed once <laughs> posted on his science page. He's our science teacher. Who's also um, a homeschool dad. Who's also a homeschool dad, <laughs> but he was like, uh, I had an assignment due today, and here are all the pages, here are all the different papers that nobody put their their name on like he's like them. and it was all of them <laughs> everybody just had to go through and like pick their handwriting but so yeah Cameron <laughs> still doesn't know that he doesn't I, I tell him I'm like you have to put your name it doesn't occur to him. yeah I mean it's one of those things that obviously they're not going to write it to turn it in but maybe you should have them do that just for <laughs> practice for when they are out in the <laughs> real classroom someday okay so um as your teens go through high school the demands on their time will only increase so they need to learn how to manage their own time they will need to know how to fit everything in without getting overwhelmed hopefully by high school they'll have some of these habits down but use these middle school years to guide them and set them up for success when they're feeling overwhelmed step in and help them These are learned skills and they don't come naturally. You can help by modeling good time management skills yourself. They are learning from you all of the time and they will pick up your habits, whether they are good habits or bad habits. Oh boy, I'm feeling a little attacked over here. (laughs) You know it's true. I know, but... (laughs) Well, for sure. Uh, One of the things that you can actually start with here, if you haven't already, is letting them set their own like wake up times in the morning. Uh, We don't really do bedtime anymore, like for middle school age. But um, if you do, you may want to give them a little bit more autonomy over that. My only real rule regarding bedtime wake up was that you needed to be up by a certain time and you need to be a pleasant person the next day so like I don't care if you stay up all night reading or gaming but if you're crabby the next day and you can't figure out a way to manage that then I'm gonna choose your bedtime right well some parents choose to limit online time I'm more strict than you Nicole you know that (laughs) when it comes to this but I do give my kids much more freedom with screen time in the later high school years you'll need to do whatever works for your family if you do allow them to set their own times you need to be sure to make them accountable for when things need to get done. If your child's not meeting their goals, you have a right to get involved. You are there to help set up the structure that they may not be able to do for themselves. Yep. Yeah, remember they are learning independence and sometimes they need a little help from you. Yeah. You may also want to instill quiet hours if they are up late or early while everyone else is still asleep. So that might be those key times. If they're up waking you or the whole family up, might need to change something. Right, right. Yeah, and teens and tweens need a lot more sleep than they even think they do. Yeah, for yeah. sure. In like, the mi- yeah. It's normal for teens to want to sleep till noon. <laughs> yeah. Like- right. In the middle school years, I have a charging station where everybody needs to charge their phone or their iPad and have it on the charger by a certain time in the evening. They can play in their room or read or quietly play guitar. That's kind of my rule, but no devices. But as they get older, <laughs> you can yeah. just go by the wayside. Well, and I let mine. I had, um, you know, on the other side of it, you know, I had a couple of kids that like to sleep later. I also had one that was like a super early bird. So like my rule for them was that 
you can't wake everybody else in the house up. You can watch TV quietly. You can get on your computer at that point, but don't wake everybody else in the house up just because you're up early. Right. (laughs) So, and you know, uh, another thing that you can do is letting your kids choose some kind of organizational planner. I used to really prefer like a pencil and paper method of calendar and to-do lists. Um, Your kids might prefer online, you know, whatever system they're going to choose to use, whatever is going to help them that they want to use is the one that you should let them use. You know, don't, don't try and like make it your way because you want something that's going to work for them. For sure. Um, I also like open-ended to-do lists rather than a rigid calendar. Um, You can model your preferred method, but again, like if they want to use a different one and that's what works like let them do that right you're trying to foster that independence so sure. let them make some decisions about how that's going to work sometimes it's completely opposite how you would do it right I've also used an app called Trello for years it's a visual time management app it's free and it allows you to create different boards that you can move around and assign projects it's super user friendly and you just kind of move things when they're completed or check them nice. off I use it on a very basic level to create assignments, but I think you can do a lot more with it and upload files, but I've never done that. Yeah. Both you and your child can have access on your phone. I've also used another thing called Time Finder, and that's more of a block scheduling type of app. It's also free. I think there's a paid version, but the free is totally fine, works fine. I actually find that one useful for me and my work, so I use that one personally. For a couple years, I used the online planner called Homeschool Planet. I have several other homeschool friends that have used that. Yeah, Um, I used that when it first came out, I think. Yeah, from the Homeschool Buyers Club. It allows you to automatically schedule out the entire semester or even the whole year. And then when your busy life happens, you can bump one of your lessons and then it bumps all the consecutive lessons to the forward going days. And that one's pretty convenient if you kind of want to be like, okay, I put all my energy in in the first of the semester and now I'm out. Right, right. Yeah. So like I said, I'm kind of a paper and pencil uh, person. I often make like a weekly plan, but with individual day checklists, like just in a notebook. And I let the kids manage the stuff that they do on their own. So, like, I'll have a week's worth of math on there. If you want to do all five days of math in, like, one day, I don't care. Yeah, like, as I long as that. it <laughs> gets done by the end of the week. And a lot of kids do really well being given that independence to manage their own schedule. So it's great. We also have, uh, we use Cozy Family Calendar, um, which is very popular. Um, I do, they do have also a freed version, but I use the paid one because it's got a lot of features in it. And so uh, introducing that digital calendar to our family, we would sit down like kind of once a week and kind of go through what our stuff was and everybody got kind of trained to check it before they would commit to things or they would add their things to it or things they wanted to do. And so it's a real handy resource for a family. I do that too. I don't think it has as many options. I use Google Calendar and yep. my kids are signed in on my Google Calendar on their phones. So then I can, I, everybody has a color. So, yeah, that's, yeah, Cozy's like that too. And yeah. you can use it, I can use it from my phone to my iPad to my computer, like it all interfaces and then it goes to everybody's and you can click like different people's events. Right. And yeah. Yeah. Even, even our dog has a category he doesn't ever go anywhere Riley, Riley really have chose anything. to be off of it in college <gasps> what she's got her own thing <laughs> my kids and my college kids still use it to like find out where I am <laughs> if they've already done the life 360 to find out why I'm not answering the phone then they go to the cozy calendar to see if I've got something so training everybody to use that was the best <laughs> right okay so uh, by the middle school years kids are starting to find different things that they are interested in or love participating in encourage their passions yeah. these differing outside interests that they have not only rounds them out as humans but will help them when it's time to select electives in high school Yeah, and we've talked before about how a downside to homeschooling is that it can be really easy to overschedule yourself. So Mm -hmm. do find a healthy balance of encouraging them to try new things, but also keeping yourself to like a reasonable schedule. Oh, for sure. Yeah. They are also probably getting to the age now where they can participate in groups or clubs that they might have been restricted by their age before. Encourage trying a variety of things and giving them a chance if you have a reluctant participant. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so sometimes this can be difficult. I know for me, there have been some instances when I have pushed them into something and they fought me, 
But then later on, they thank me. Oh, my gosh, Mom, thank you for making me do that activity. <laughs> but then there are other times when I push them, and it was not the best experience. And they're like, oh, Mom, you made me do that. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you just never know. You never do. Yeah, you know your child best. So in those moments, you just have to make a judgment call. Yeah, absolutely. I've also talked before about how I have a couple kids <laughs> that are yesers to everything and one who's like a no, but always then ends up liking what the thing is so you just have to you have to feel them out right for sure <laughs> so uh now is also time to focus some of your time on teaching life skills i mean ideally you've been doing it all along but um these are some things to definitely make sure you check off your list things that they need to know to be successful in life uh life skills like cooking oh gosh yes cooking sometimes they just can cook the whole meal now they're yeah. older oh so, yeah and there's other times i would make them find a recipe mm -hmm. and i'd give them some money and drop them off at the grocery store and then take off and that would and it makes them feel like a big kid next to their little siblings oh, for sure That's for so sure fun. they love that um i also read somewhere once to encourage kids to cook now i'm a from scratch baker and things like that i'm kind of picky about ingredients but i read to get kids to cook throw some boxed brownie mix cookie mix mm -hmm. and stuff just in the pantry like don't even tell anybody about it and you know when they're going through trying to find a snack they'll find it and be like oh can i have this and then you're like sure you can make it right the instructions are on the back try that out yeah. um, and that's a great way to get kids involved in cooking also uh, life skills like cleaning obviously <laughs> um, that is good uh, how to do laundry um, you can teach them how to iron uh, teach some uh, stain removal um, oh I'm so mean I'm, I make them do the laundry from like the age of six well I do I actually we do <laughs> we start laundry kind of more like 10 years old and stuff uh, but yeah uh, but teaching them some of the other yeah. parts of laundry like Iron, uh, ironing uh, like and sewing saying. sewing buttons we actually did that in our adventure kids class we taught everybody like everybody should know how to sew a button it's one we of did the a lot of basics. sewing when they were tiny with them um, felt we yeah would cut like little felt shapes and put some stuffing inside and make little tiny pillows from, oh sure they were teeny tiny another thing would be is money management it's a great life skill mm -hmm. we did dave ramsey's we talked about the envelope system before and your child can also open up a checking or a savings account yep they might be uh trying to save up for a big item maybe they're asking you like what can i do around the house for money or mm -hmm. what other ways can i make some money we had that great um episode about our first one of the year about homeschooling on a budget and we right. had some ideas in there for um, things that you can do to make money. So. They can also start mowing the neighbor's yard. There's oh, sure. things like that. They can market themselves or they have a special skill. We're also going to have a episode on how to be an entrepreneur. Right. And our high school series. Yes. You know, some of those tips you can use for your middle school or too. For sure. I'm in middle school too. My uh, daughters, uh, I mean, my son could do this too, but not limited to gender. But uh, another thing that your kids can do is maybe take a Red Cross first aid class on babysitting. Uh, these are often offered by the uh, library or rec center and are right. free or very low cost and just make them marketable too. We ended up putting those on resumes later. Well, as we well. did that in the venturing scout group in the we color did. scout group. So we did that. Actually, it was at one of those emergency like kiosk clinics mm -hmm. and they were doing a class for us. It was yeah, awesome. It was the people wonderful. Were, yeah, they were fantastic. Another thing you can think about is pet care and training. You know, they're old enough to be responsible for taking care of your animals and also you know training them they yeah. can read up about how to teach your dog new tricks whatever you know we're currently teaching our dogs how to talk with those buttons have you seen these buttons no. what do you oh. mean what buttons? <laughs> they're they're buttons uh, you don't follow bunny on tiktok no I oh my goodness bunny on TikTok. yeah she's a poodle or a doodle i don't know what kind of dog she is but no there's these buttons and you can train them to hit these buttons to do their favorite word now bunny like speaks about like astrophysics and stuff with her buttons <laughs> i have i only have four buttons that say outside treats water and food really yeah oh and so we're, we're teaching them and they've they've used the water button like twice possibly by accident but <laughs> the kids got really really involved in training oh the dogs gosh, to I use need to follow bunny on tiktok you do <laughs> we're gonna link to bunny in our show notes <laughs> Okay, so um, another life skill that you really need to think about is car care and maintenance. I'm changing the oil, changing a tire, filling up the air pressure in your tires when they go low on these cold days that we have yeah. today. So all of those things, um, my kids kind of went above and beyond yeah, with the car yes, thing. Yes, totally. Like, yeah, she just... <laughs> 
my daughter just replaced all the suspension system in her car in the driveway. There were a million parts everywhere. And then she went to work the, that afternoon. I so, love it. You don't yeah. have to do that. <laughs> no, but just basic <laughs> maintenance, know how to, knowing how to take care of a car, check the oil, check your yeah. fluids, all those things. That's an important life skill. They For need sure. to know that. Yeah. Once high school starts, time gets filled quickly with increased school demands, jobs, friends, and extracurricular activities. It's not that there won't be time to teach these things then, but your time will be limited. So it makes sense to work on the skills that your child will need to be independent now while they're in middle school and you have the opportunity. Yeah. Helping your child develop the ability to plan and organize can really help them feel better prepared for high school. So just like you set routines and rhythms when your child was younger to keep them stable and grounded, schedules and routines can now help them feel in control of their changing surroundings. And this is really important when so much is changing at this age. For sure. Make sure you check out our schedules, routines, and rhythms. That episode was, I think, our episode nine, Schedules, Routines, and Rhythms. You guys should check that out. It's about setting your school up for success. Another thing is working with your middle schooler to develop good study habits and time management skills that can proactively help them handle more difficult coursework and increase workload. This can help them from feeling overwhelmed. I created some freebies for you this week that's going to help them and set them up for success and help them learn good study habits. Getting them some kind of a daily planner and showing them how to organize it and keep track with assignments, as you mentioned earlier, due dates and other activities, it's going to allow them to feel calmer and like they have more control in when it comes to tackling their educational and other responsibilities. Yeah, these skills, the ability to effectively manage time and good study habits, these are going to help your child in life in general. And uh, the ability to manage your daily life, both personally and um, in your education, is going to help them further their development into confident adults. For sure. Homeschoolers sometimes have a harder time with taking notes because many have not been exposed to a classroom environment. That is not necessarily a bad thing, but even if they are not college bound, students will benefit from note taking skills. Note taking really cannot be taught as much as learned by experience and everyone has their own methods for this. Think about what worked for you and start there. I know with me, I actually had my children take notes as they were entering middle school. It's kind of one of those things. Like if I would read a certain chapter in a book, I would have them take notes. So it's kind of a skill that I taught. And also we took a study skills class that yes, t- taught yeah. some of that. They did do that. Um, so much has changed with technology too since we were younger. I found it really interesting that my kids often share note taking with like friends in college by yeah. using like a shared Google Doc. Like they just all open it and they take notes together in lectures. And then it's cool because some Somebody may have missed something and the other person picked it up and it's just it makes studying That's later cool. a That's, lot right it's yeah. also te- teaching cooperation oh for sure and it's them. also yeah it's just it would have been really handy for me right <laughs> so uh, for teaching test taking strategies we've mentioned before that our kids didn't really do a whole lot of test taking before they did the TSI never, for community never. college placement <laughs> that was Riley's first test <laughs> ever yeah we had a, we lived in a couple states that had testing requirements before we got here but we didn't have a ton of experience with it. We want our students to learn and become lifelong learners. Um, However, if they are college bound, tests are going to be plentiful. And even if they're going straight into a career, there's going to be, there might be certifications or skill assessment tests to face. So it can be a handy skill to have. Absolutely. Yeah. Taking a test is much easier if a student knows how to prepare for it and how to approach that test. Give them exposure to multiple choice questions because a lot of them are set up like that. Yep. Talk about how to eliminate the unlikely answers. That's stuff that we learned when we were in school, but our kids may not. That's not an intuitive thing to know. Yeah. For comprehension questions, have them skim over the questions before they read the material. That way, they kind of know what's expected. There are all kinds of test preparation courses available to students in book form or online. Khan Academy is one place that offers free test prep. You can also find free test prep at your library. YouTube is also a great place to help you with some of those study skills and test prep things. Yeah. 
And not so different from when they were younger, uh, studies show middle school age students learn better by exploring and asking questions. So use curricula that has a lot of hands-on activities. Try choosing methods of teaching that involve drawing maps or building models or, or doing handicrafts. You bring back those handicrafts right. from lower levels. This is kind of my favorite age to homeschool because, you know, sometimes when they're in younger elementary school, they're a little too young to do some things. And then in high school, they're so busy. But I feel like it's kind of like my shining moment in middle school because we can do all the fun things and we don't have the additional pressures of yeah. high school and having to do the transcript. So it's kind of a fun time to just explore and do lots of things that you normally, you know, maybe have forgotten in elementary school. Yeah. Find a science curriculum that offers several experiments. That yep. is a fun way to learn. Encourage play with circuits and Legos. Explore coding programs like I talked about earlier. Lots to do out there for them. And this is the time to really like branch out. You really wanna make sure that you encourage independent learning. As your child enters high school, you want to be sure that they are prepared to continue learning as challenge levels increase. You also want to ensure they can apply the knowledge to their performance in the real world. You really want to encourage your child to become an independent learner. While it can be tempting to immediately turn the focus to preparing for college, like we really want our kids to focus instead on loving learning, mm -hmm. um, figuring out where their strengths and weaknesses lie. They're going to have less overall structure in their high school learning environment, and a student's success is going to be greatly impacted by their ability to take ownership of their education and learn independently. Right. One great way to foster this ability is to continue to encourage them to read independently. I cannot stress that enough. Yep. Another thing is just to discover where their interests lie. You know, who are they? What do they like? Students that are encouraged to read for fun and follow their passions soon develop the self-motivation to keep that learning going. And they will naturally begin to push themselves to learn more. This sense of personal responsibility for their learning and education will help them as their workload will increase and studies get more difficult. Yep, so. we, we love, 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 love those books. Mm -hmm. So keep exposing them to good books. This is something that doesn't really change from elementary to high school, at least for us. Uh, continue to choose great books that build grammar, vocabulary, uh, do read alouds with the family as well as individual reading. Um, this is gonna enable students to hear and see grammar and language in use. If you find that your child still struggles with grammar and vocabulary skills, middle school is the perfect time to strengthen those. Uh, we do a lot with narration and dictation at this age. And as much as I want to continue, my high schooler will not allow me to read to him, and maybe yours won't either. <laughs> like he is like mom, like rolling his eyes, and sometimes that happens, so I would love to keep that going, but unfortunately that <laughs> ship is sh sailed They're, for me. Every child is different. Right. Uh, another thing to think about is just to give them time. We all get stuck in a rut, busy, busy, and more busy. And this can harm students' creativity and time to really think deeply. A huge benefit of homeschooling is that our kids have great amounts of time to be free and just to be themselves. So be sure not to overschedule your middle schoolers. Try to limit online time. Let them have lots of time to explore and ask questions. Let them experiment and fail. Switch things out and try again. So important. So just a reminder that this is a weekly episode. We drop one every Thursday morning just for you. And if you have any additional ideas or comments, please come and comment on our Facebook page on the episode thread or send us an email at info at btdthomeschool.com. We'd really love to hear from you. So how do you deal with sibling growing pains? Oh goodness. Well, something you may start to notice with middle schoolers is that at this age, they may be feeling like they are outgrowing some of the things that their younger siblings are doing. Mm -hmm. They may view some of those things as babyish and may become resistant to participating in activities or other things that they used to enjoy. So hmm. I know, it's a little sad, but it's all normal. And it's how teens and tweens establish themselves as separate people with distinct likes and dislikes. Mm -hmm. Conflict with siblings is totally normal. It's all part of their developmental journey towards independence and autonomy. 
how siblings work through their conflicts is really what's going to shape the way that they feel about and relate to each other. For sure. We discussed a lot about how to foster good sibling relationships in episode 11 that was called All About Family. Mm -hmm. There are so many ways that you can encourage independence while still building those strong sibling bonds and promoting your family as a team and a unit. It's important to find some balance here. So take note, focusing some energy on finding age appropriate activities that you can take your older child to that doesn't include the youngers. This was the perfect age for my 12 year old to take his laptop and go game with a friend at their house. You may also start letting them skip out on some of the activities they used to love when they were younger. And even though that's sad, like Nicole said, it's all completely normal. Usually they have some strong feelings about how they want to spend their time and that doesn't always mesh with the family. When you're working with their younger siblings, this might be a great opportunity for them to explore those interests and just go do their own thing. It might be their new favorite time of the day. Maybe just hanging out in their room, listening to too loud of music. (laughs) If that is their favorite time, be sure to put it into your day every day so that they have that to look forward to. Yeah, at this age, uh, my kids really enjoyed being able to like stay home alone or sometimes maybe I would drop them off at a coffee shop down the street from park day and then I would take their younger sibling there. It's good because if you have a bunch of kids, sometimes it's tricky to really find one on one, you know, here time for all these different activities Mm -hmm. for kids and um, you might not have time to drop people off at multiple long events. So if you can kind of maximize these together, that will work out for you. Sibling fights tend to peak in early adolescence, particularly when the youngest sibling hits this age, but you probably also notice an increase as the oldest one grows. Uh, Teenagers choose their friends based on similar likes and interests, but they can't choose their siblings. (laughs) You're stuck with who you get, right? Um, And they might feel like they suddenly don't have much in common with them apart from the same genetics. Um, And this is where you can focus on the things that they do have in common. So, uh, you know, having those family game nights or fun activities or places, things they like to see or do together. Right. And I found sometimes that it's actually best and my kids get along better at this age when I literally step away because I want all this family time, family time. But you know, really, they don't want mom there. Yeah, nothing bonds um, siblings together like talking about how crazy your mom is. That's true. That's true. <laughs> That's so true. So a lot of times I would just leave them um, like to go game on, you know, maybe something I would I would be like, oh, my gosh, you're playing that. Like I would just let them because they're bonding and that's a really important time for them because they're starting to learn who each other are at an older age right if a younger teenage child sees an older sibling as an authority figure fighting can increase as the older child tries to gain independence from both parents and siblings this can also make the younger one feel like they are being parented by the sibling and cause discord sometimes you may need to remind the older one that they are not the adult And try to be mindful of not putting the older one in that role of a babysitter too often. I know sometimes with larger families, it's kind of a necessity, but you might really want to be mindful of the fact of the position you're putting them in too. Yeah. I mean, we want to uh, prepare our kids to be world citizens and to think beyond themselves. Teens and tweens can kind of be naturally a little bit selfish. It's normal. (laughs) Um, We want to encourage them to be kind and have empathy towards others. uh, And that's for families and strangers. Yeah. Volunteering is a great way to do this, but also just talking about current events, reading about different people and places, and exposing them to a wide range of ideas. Yes. We will include some of the links and ideas and everything that we're talking about on our show notes on our website. So be sure to check that out after you listen. We would love it if you would take a second to go out there and like and rate us. Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio. We are on all those streaming platforms. So go out and check us out. Give us a thumbs up. So how do you motivate your middle schooler? Motivation can be tricky. First and foremost, your child must understand the importance of doing well themselves Mm -hmm. for themselves. Motivation can't be forced. And if you try to force your child to be motivated, it's almost always going to backfire. Oh, for sure. Remind them that it's not grades that matter, but effort and quality of work. Help them to understand the difference between half-assing something just to get it done (laughs) and really putting time and effort into a project. Sometimes this may require a curriculum change or adjustment to whatever homeschool method that you're using. 
again, we want to encourage them to keep learning and growing and progressing. So giving your students tangible adult tasks to handle on their own can help motivate them. Mm -hmm. uh, fostering a growth mindset will enhance their motivation and also develop skills that'll help with self-regulation. Let them be a big part of goal setting. Uh, helping your middle schooler establish manageable goals, along with strategies for steps necessary to achieve them, can deliver fantastic results. So parents who regularly utilize goal setting to engage and motivate themselves are modeling this behavior that's going to help their children in the long term. This also is going to increase their ability to monitor their own progress. Mm -hmm. So these are important skills. Right. You need to make sure that you stay positive with your language and you're communicating with your middle schooler. You need to keep a relationship with your child that's open and respectful and positive. You're on the same team. This mm -hmm. will allow you to be influential, which is your most important parenting tool. Mm -hmm. Middle schoolers are going through a lot of changes with their bodies and their outlook on life. And it's essential that we create a welcoming environment for them to just be themselves. When they feel like they're safe and in a safe space to make mistakes and grow, it's going to enable them to learn and to be motivated. Yeah, and if you're having conflict with your child, um, be sure to keep in mind that your child's not behaving this way on purpose, like to make your life miserable. <laughs> you're there to help them learn how to be responsible. And if you get negative and make this about you, then your child might become defiant. Mm -hmm. We've talked before about how you're a safe person. Like sometimes your kids are gonna act out with negativity because they know that like you're still gonna love them. Right. You know, so that is, you know, it's normal. It kind of sucks. Sometimes you have to be careful not to get your feelings hurt about it. It sucks really <laughs> bad because let me tell you, I don't like being that safe person in those I moments. I don't always like to be that safe person no. either. <laughs> but we want to focus on healthy relationships, like not just us, but others as well. We often focus on the new friendships and relationships that our children are going to find and develop as they leave middle school and kind of enter high school. Those relationships are going to bolster their sense of self and social compass as they grow and develop. Yeah, we're raising adults not children yeah. so we want them to we want to teach them how to form really meaningful relationships we have a little bit of an advantage because we can pick and choose who we spend our time with as homeschoolers but it's also easy to limit ourselves to certain families or to certain groups we should keep casual groups broad talk to your kids about the importance of quality over quantity friends versus acquaintances Children should also be encouraged to develop relationships with their coaches or outside instructors and mentors as well. Sometimes I feel like, you know, my kids feel like they're obligated to be friends with other kids that they've always, that they're familiar with, that they've always seen. Yeah. And they feel kind of an obligation to the family, but, you know, really they need to find their own people. Yeah. And we've talked a lot, too, about how you can always pick a homeschooler out by how well they relate to adults. So, <laughs> That's true. So, you know, I encourage those adult relationships, too. Those are always handy to have. Right. Hopefully your kids are already pretty great at readily and openly communicating with others. And this is going to continue to help them in the high school years and beyond. Developing good communication skills will also allow them to stay aware of their progress and get a good idea of how they can improve in their studies or other activities. Yeah, another thing that helps motivate is to encourage them to keep their own records or memories or schoolwork samples. Um, teach them how to build a portfolio or scrapbook um, or journal. Mm -hmm. Like these are all things that can show progress and help with setting long-term goals. Right. There's so many great things we covered today, Nicole. Oh my gosh, we really, really did. Oh my gosh. So we're going to have all kinds of great resources and references, and I'm going to have some freebies to help them with some of those basic study skills and set them up for success. So next week on episode 18, we're going to be talking about a homeschooling lifestyle. How do you create lifelong learners? We're going to be talking about creating habits that work for the entire family and how do you create an environment that inspires learners? We're going to be talking about all those issues and more. So it's join us be next time. Great. It's going to be great. See you next time. Bye. Cheers. Be sure to check us out on our website at btdthomeschool.com, as in been there, done that, btdthomeschool.com. 
You can join our mailing list and get news and updates on future podcasts. And be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at the BTDT Been There, Done That Homeschool Podcast.